Hello everybody. Welcome back to part 3 of lecture 3. The array is the one of course uh, which um, most widely used in uh, embedded programming. Of course uh, in a high level programming we may use uh, structure and uh, union and all but I may not discuss in this uh, review. Array is uh, actually a uh, collection of uh, same variable that referred with a single name. Like if I have, if I want to store uh, maybe 10 integers, okay, but I want to access with the same name. Okay, so you can see the name is same, only the index changes. Okay, so it's going to be a collection in which the initial values like sample of 0 and 1, it goes up to sample of 9 from 0 to 9 it's total 10 values okay for accessing the array we need to use a looping of course a looping and uh, array goes uh, hand in hand okay uh, whenever we need to use uh, arrays we have to go through uh, using the uh, loop looping method only okay and uh, we have a single dimensional array as you can see this is a single dimensional array and also we have an two dimensional array where I can have a row and then column with another square bracket okay and uh, mostly we may have a character array as as I told integer array as going to occupy two bytes of memory the next is about the preprocessor directive as I said about uh, ash define and uh, ash include these two are most most widely used uh, uh, directives Ash define the basic thing is like we are assigning a value to a variable or we can say to the label okay so in a program you want to check some value is a as a thousand okay so or three thousand like instead of checking as a numerals we can always assign some label for that okay a meaningful name we are giving to that so if you check with Ash define count so 3000 in your program wherever you use the name count that refers to 3000 it also helps us in uh, uh, many ways like if you keep writing 3000 in your program let us assume in a 10 or 15 places you may need to replace all of them and of course sometimes you know you may use some advanced functions like find and replace but you may use the same numbers for other purpose and uh, it makes you know programming little complex uh, so better to use these kind of uh, defined statements so whenever I say like uh, count that refers to this value so you want to change the value to some other uh, you know numbers you just change in one place automatically it changes into the wherever there is a variable name count it will change in your program okay and you can see there are some examples like as define some level like 100 and the motor on like some hexadecimal value okay these are some examples and of course I will show you in real time program also how to use these values okay and uh, ash include as you are aware is uh, most commonly used and of course there is a first line in most of the C program as well ash include the header file name now we will move on to the 8051's port details and the simple program now and we already learned that 8051 has 32 bidirectional IO lines and 8 of them grouped and it is referred as a port the port is nothing but as we say you know we do import and export this is a place where you are going to send some data to the microcontroller and also receive some output from microcontroller but this is going to be digital that means zeros and ones okay and is used to for the user for input or output there are four ports in total port 0 1 2 and 3 okay so this port pin can be individually controlled as a input or output that we have to uh, you know configure okay so as an input or output uh, port just i want to show you this internal diagram which is extracted from the data sheet there is an internal pull up resistors in port 1, port 3 and port 2 
whereas in port 0 there is no internal pull up resistor whenever you want to use you know port 0 for a digital input and output purpose we need to connect external pull up resistor okay just that's the purpose i just given these uh, diagrams over here now let us see a simple example like how can uh, we control a led using a microcontroller okay and also the method which you have to connect uh, to the led also you have to just learn about it now we assume that the led is going to connect it to port 1 and bit 0 okay so when you give your 1 the led is off why because it's connected to power and this kind of connection is referred as a, a sinking method okay that means from external power source through the load the current flows through the ground pin of microcontroller and if you connect other way around that means a led anode followed by a resistor to the ground that kind of connection is referred as a sourcing um, if you refer to the data sheet most of the digital ICs will have better sinking current than sourcing that means whenever you try to connect the hardware you have to follow this kind of sinking connection method ok now this is a thing which you have to take a precaution especially when you don't use uh, resistors excess amount of current may flow through the port I open and it may damage ok so we sometimes we may need to connect here a buffer also which I will discuss it in upcoming videos now let us consider a simple uh, method that means a current limiting resistor with the LED and which is connected to the port now VCC minus the LED voltage drop will give you the voltage drop across a resistor divide by the LED current if you choose it as a 10 milliamps that means 5 volt minus let us consider as LED voltage drop as a 1.7 divided by 10 milliamps is going to give you the you know the resistance value ok uh, I am sorry this again it should be resistance value ok and if you connect the resistor value that is going to be your circuit for hardware and of course you have to take care of the crystal oscillator VCC and ground pin and also the reset circuit and all which is suggested earlier ok like this is a simple connection now the VCC and ground pin is not shown in this diagram and you can see EA pin has to be connected to high and a resistor again in a simulation window I have used here without resistor but in real time you should not use without resistor ok there must be a resistor I am sorry for that and the RC circuit over here for reset and the crystal circuit for timing operations ok and you can see here these two capacitors is actually again a recommendation from the data sheet just see this is the simplest program and it starts with the void main and we have an infinite loop the embedded system never gets halted that means no stop even it's idle it will do just some uh, simple execution ok so all these programs are written in an infinite loop and we say here port 1 xr equals 0x01 the xr operation is referred as a toggle we already learned in a bitwise operator there is and r and xr ok so xr operation is going to toggle the value of the particular bit if you write down this one in a binary you get here like you know uh, 7 zeros followed by 1 that means bit 0 value is going to be toggle so imagine the bit value initially as a 0 and that becomes here 1 and there is a delay we have written this as a one function now this is a function and we receive the value in the function and we just decrement the value that means this function is going to count the value from um, 20,000 and up to 0 ok and this variable declaration is not needed ok so this can be removed so what you will observe this program is going to make bit 0 of port 1 flashing ok now 
Now just let me show how to create a project and how to set up the simulation environment. You may need to download the software Keel and I used uh, the very old version. Okay. And you may need to download the latest version and then uh, follow the steps for installation and all. Okay. And this is a Keel environment. First you have to create a project. I say project new project there will be a window which will be popping up just give a location to save the project so give a project name like let us say LED save and then you have to choose a microcontroller let me choose atmel 89c51 say ok it will ask you to copy the default you know startup file say yes and then this is a startup file which is written in assembly language and then we have to add a first c file So I'm just trying to copy from here. This is my C file. And I need to save it as a C file. I say demo.c save. Okay. Now as I told we don't need this line. We will just remove that and this C file we need to add to this project ok so right click right click on source add files to the source group say demo.c close that means you have a project which is named as a you know LED you can see here LED and this is your C file ok and then when you compile this the particular code what you have written will be converted into a, a machine code or we say machine language whereas that has to be programmed into the our microcontroller using some programming software ok to enable that option you have to just right click on this say options and there is an output here create a x file and then say ok now you can see the option here it says like creating x file when you look at the folder You can see now there will be a hex file. So this file has to be loaded into your microcontroller using some you know flash programming software or even you can use this uh, X file to load into your microcontroller of a simulation environment. That I will show it in a different video. So what you learned so far? like how to start the kill and how to create a project and how to choose a target that means the microcontroller and then how to compile okay now finally you can also have a debugging window here so I just click on debug and we have here port 1 so you can see here peripherals I have ports port 1 so you can also click on here debugging and just say run you can see th the port pin is flashing ok so that's the program what we are written for and to come back just click on this debugging this is your program and we